Hey guys, in this video I'm checking out another lens that was sent to me by Brighton Star. This time it is a 12mm f2 for APS-C. This is a manual lens, uh, relatively inexpensive, although it is more than the 50mm lens that I reviewed in my last video. So let's see if this little thing will impress me as much as the 50mm. Now, as you can see, I'm in my new studio room. It's still a work in progress, so bear with me as I sort out my audio, lighting, and sound issues. Um, but anyway, let's jump into what comes in this little box. This lens comes nicely packaged in a box surrounded by foam and felt. It comes with a front and rear lens cap, both of which are plastic. In addition to the lens and the plastic caps, you get a small microfiber cloth and a manual as well as a warranty card. Here is what the lens looks like when you take it out of the package. It does have an included lens hood that is metal and it's just a spin-on type. You can remove it just like that and that is what the front of the lens would look like. You can see the convex front lens element uh, to let in all of that light. Uh, 62 millimeter filter thread, 12 millimeter f2 and Brighton Star branding on the front. There are some markings for uh, measuring your focus distance. Now the focus ring is a little bit too stiff for my liking. It's also not the smoothest focus ring in the world so We'll see how it performs when I get out and start taking photos with it. The aperture control is towards the back where it should be. It does not have any distinct clicks, but it goes from f2 all the way to f22. Also around the side of this lens, you have a little serial number. And then around the back, just a metal mount, no electronic connections. Again, this is a manual focus lens. And you can see clearly that this is only for a PSC. This will not cover a full frame sensor. You can use this on a full frame camera in crop mode, um, or if you use it in full frame mode, you'll just get a ton of vignetting in the corners. Here is the lens mounted on my a6400. It looks like a very well-designed lens and compact, so easy to take with you if you're out traveling. Now, I don't know if all of these lenses are the same or if I just got a copy that was a little bit different, but at least on mine, the focus ring is definitely harder to turn than even the aperture ring. Uh, both rings are pretty stiff. I would say they're on the too stiff side of things. Uh, you really want something a little bit lighter and easier to turn. Especially because this is a manual focus lens, you want a nice focus ring and unfortunately I would not describe this particular focus ring as nice. But let's jump into the sample images and see if the performance uh, does something better than the focus ring. So. All of these sample shots and videos were done on my Sony a6400, straight out of the camera, no editing, no post-processing. Uh, these are all JPEGs, so let's take a look.
That is it for the sample photos and videos. This is an interesting lens and there are a couple of things that you should be aware of if you are shopping around and considering buying this. So first thing that you'll notice probably immediately is the flaring. It's overwhelming in a lot of scenarios if you are shooting into the sun. You can use it in an artistic way if you play around with it, but for my personal taste, it's a little bit too much flaring. And mind you, all of these sample shots were done with the included spin-on lens hoods. Even with this little lens hood, uh, it really didn't perform that well outside in direct sunlight. The second thing that I noticed is, as expected, chromatic aberration is a big issue with this lens, especially at f2. This is pretty typical of fast lenses such as this one, but for reference, I found that both the Sigma 16 f1.4 and the Rokinon 12mm f2, which I would say are the two main competitors for this lens, both do a better job with controlling chromatic aberration. As far as sharpness, this lens is not bad, but it's not as sharp as the Rokinon 12 mm f2, and I found that it was not as sharp as the Sigma 16 mm at the same settings. Now, it is a smaller lens if you're looking for something that's more compact, but in every other category, the Sigma wins very easily. So let's talk about the issues that I have with this lens. First and foremost, something that I mentioned at the beginning of this video once I got my hands on this lens, the focus ring. I do not like the focus ring on this lens at all. Again, it's too stiff. Although it doesn't feel gritty, I found that there is a bit of uneven kind of rotation when you're trying to nail down focus. Now, it does stop from one side to the other, which is good, but I did notice that on my particular copy of this lens, infinity focus was not correctly set. So I was not able to get really sharp images with a subject that was really far away from me, like horizons and hills, which is unfortunate. And unlike other lenses that are like this, there are no adjustment screws on this lens body. So I have no idea if I just got a bad copy or if there's any way I can fine tune the infinity focus on this particular lens. Nothing bad to say really about the aperture control. Uh, it's just as stiff. Actually, the aperture control is smoother in rotation than the focus ring. If the focus ring on this lens was as smooth as the aperture ring, I would like it a whole lot more. Another point of disappointment on this lens is just the finish work and the attention to detail. If you look, there is a little red dot here to indicate the center point on the focusing guide on the barrel. Whoever they had finished this lens just decided to paint way outside of the lines. Kind of a poor look, especially because it's right at the top of the lens. It's something that you see each and every time you look down. Small things like that that indicate you know, this lens could use some improvement. I think for the time being, there are a number of other options that are better values for the money. Now, let's talk about money real quick. This lens is also quite a bit more expensive than the 50 millimeter uh, that I tested in my last video. Uh, that lens was $90. This thing is about $185 and that puts you well within striking distance of the Rokinon 12 millimeter, which if you get the silver version of the Rokinon, that's about $230, well worth spending an extra $40 or so and getting the Rokinon. It's a much easier lens to focus, much smoother focus ring, uh, better image quality, better control of chromatic aberration, and better resale as well. Um, if you want a step up or an upgrade over that, the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, still my favorite all around lens, the one that I recommend most frequently, so definitely check that one out. And if you want something that's very wide, if you're doing interior real estate photos, for example, the Laowa 9 millimeter f2.8 is my suggestion. I'll post links to all of these lenses that I mentioned down in the uh, description below, so definitely check those out. If you want to read more about this uh, lens in particular and specs about it, as well as check pricing and availability, check out the Amazon link down below. So let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of the sample images from this little thing. Uh, let me know if you guys were impressed or not impressed, and um, that is going to be it for my review of this thing. Thank you guys for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more, and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Hey MTV, welcome to my crib. <laughs> this is the front porch. It's a work in progress. We need a lot of work done, so we're gonna probably tear down the whole front and put a giant window. We like open spaces. We love like fresh air and just natural sunlight. So that's gonna
can't all be gone, but let's go inside. Now this door, seven foot, mm -mm, we need 13 feet doors. You can't go in here. 